The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of two ERP components that are related to memory. One is called the FN400 and the other one is called the LPC. LPC stands for late posterior component or sometimes people call it the late positive component. This video is meant to go along with Steve Luck's Introduction to ERPs course. I'll put a link at the end of this video to his online YouTube channel. So first let's quickly refresh what an what is an ERP? An ERP stands for Event Related Potential. And what it is, is an electroencephalogram. So first you record the electrical activity of the brain at a bunch of different electrodes across the scalp. You time lock that to a particular event, like the presentation of a word or an image. And then you average that, sig average that uh, EEG to reveal some sort of signal, which is the ERP. So here's an example of some EEG here recorded at different electrodes and of course you have voltage is the y-axis and time is the x-axis. So plotting ERPs often we record from many electrodes and papers will often only show one or selected electrodes like for example here this is the P3 electrode so you can see the activity at the P3 electrode and what you're seeing here again is time on the x-axis and you're seeing voltage on the y-axis prototypically memory researchers plot positive up but you have to look at the axis because some people are going to plot negative up and these are the ERP signals for different items so in this case a hit is an old item called old and also the source was remembered in this case the source was whether an item was from one particular list or another and a confusion is when they remembered that it was old but they misattributed it to a different list and of course a new item is an unstudied item and so what you're seeing here is you're seeing it an ERP component called the LPC and that gives you the time window 500 to 800 milliseconds. This box sort of defines that for you and you often see plots a lot like this showing that, uh, showing the ERP traces. We'll also want to look at how this particular component was distributed across the scalp. So what we do is we sub take some subtractions, like we could take the hits and subtract out the new items and create a difference map like down here. And this difference map shows you the amplitude placement over the scalp. So the nose is up, you have left on left, right on right, and you can see that the redder colors mean that there's more positivity at particular electrodes. These ERPs have been connected to recognition memory, so we have to define what recognition memory is. So recognition is when you see information, item, in your environment or in the laboratory we could expose you to a list of information and then you have to determine whether you've seen that before whether it's old previously encountered or new that is it's unstudied so in the real world it might be like walking around and seeing a familiar face and identifying that person in the laboratory it might be seeing a word or a picture that you studied earlier in the study phase so there's some definitions here we could have that's the recognition test sets up for item response combinations. So you could have an old item, when you call it old, we call that a hit. And generally the language is stilted towards identifying old items, so we would call that a hit. If you have an old item, but you call it new, well that would be a miss. A new item called old, that's known as a false alarm, and a new item called new is a correct rejection because you're rejecting it as old. You'll see some of these definitions come up in this video and then the labels in the ERP traces. Now recognition can be supported by familiarity, recollection, or a mix of both of these processes. So familiarity is a sense of oldness in the absence of remembering any specific details. So to keep with the example of identifying a person, everybody's had the experience where you see somebody's face and they look familiar but you don't remember anything about them you don't remember their name you don't even know where you know them from they just look familiar if you've ever had that experience you've had that sense of familiarity about it now recognition can be supported by familiarity where you just sort of know it's old on the other hand you could recollect individual details so you might remember the person's name maybe that's all you remember you might remember the name where you know them from, other personal details about that person. You might remember specific details about them. In the laboratory, we usually ask for some aspect of the study context to be reported in order to identify that the items were recollected. 
Now encoding uh, can create memories of different strengths. So encoding just refers to the processes that you are doing when you first encounter the information. So a lot of times we assign tasks in the laboratory um, when people are studying words or studying a series of pictures or whatever it is that they're looking at. So a shallow encoding task you might be asked the question, is the word printed in capital letters? And in this case, that question focuses people to examine the physical characteristics of the word. This creates a very weak memory. They're not thinking about the meaning of the word or relating the information to themselves. And so because of these memories are weak, you're much more likely on average to have familiarity based recognition if you've encoded the items shallowly. On the other hand, if you've encoded the items deeply, so for example, we could ask people, does the word refer to an animate or inanimate object? And to make this determination, you have to think about the meaning of the word. And this creates a very strong memory, and it's much more likely to promote recollection-based recognition. So one way we can try to dissociate these two processes is through encoding. We can also measure familiarity and recollection. There's a couple different ways researchers have tried to separate them. One is to use subjective ratings or the so-called remember no judgments. So remember or are judgments, uh, you ask people to make these judgments when they remember a specific detail about the encoding experience or the study experience. So for example, if they remember hearing the word in a male voice, that would be an item or detail that they remembered and they could give it an R response, signaling that they've recollected something about the original experience. On the other hand, if they just know that it was old, if they just have that sense of familiarity when they just know it's old, they would give it a K response. Uh, in this case, they don't have any specific recollection of encountering the information, but they know it's just old, so they would give it a K. So R judgments map onto recollection, K judgments wrap, map onto familiarity. Another way to do this is a more objective way, and that is to have people report directly on the source of the information. So to do this, you would have to have two sources of information, like two different lists. One list that is presented in a male voice, one list that is presented in a female voice, for example. And then not only are people reporting whether or not the item is old, but they're also reporting, uh, in this case, who said it. Was it the male voice or the female voice? And if they remember the correct source, then the idea is that at least one item, one piece of information was recollected, who said it. If they miss the information, then the assumption there is that the item was judged old only on the basis of familiarity. So uh, a more objective way to do this. So characteristics of the FN400. It's a mid frontal negativity, about 400 milliseconds. So the prototypical window is 300 to 500 milliseconds that studies use, but this can be shifted a little bit depending on the study. And studied items or items that are familiar will elicit a more positive ERP amplitude during this window than unstudied or unfamiliar items. So for example, if you look over here at this blue arrow is pointing to the FN 400, three to 500 millisecond range, and you see that uh, items that were identified as old, in this case items that were encoded shallowly and identified as old, have a more positive ERP than the new items, signaling uh, a difference there or identifying a difference there. Now the LPC happens a little bit later, 500 to 800 milliseconds is the prototypical window uh, and uh, it is often greater at the parietal electrodes, as you can see here. So sometimes it's known as the parietal old new effect, although this can change with other stimuli like pictures. But again, studied items elicit a more positive ERP than unstudied items. So you see here the black line and the new here for the LPC. Uh, there's lots of evidence linking the FN400 to familiarity and the LPC to recollection. So let's review some of that evidence. And it begins with this study that we're looking at here uh, in RUG et al. What they did is they had people study items using deep encoding where they were generating a sentence using a word or shallow encoding where they looked at the word and they decided whether the first and the last letter in the word were in alphabetic order. So again, they're just paying attention to the appearance of the word rather than thinking about its meaning. So what they did is a couple different contrasts. So they first looked at items that were encoded shallowly and hit, so remember that's an old item called old, versus an old item that was 
not called old, it was called new, a miss, and they looked at that contrast. And so if you look, you can see here, this is the solid line is the shallow hit, and the shallow miss is this dotted line. Uh, there appears to be a difference there. And if you do the subtraction and look at the difference map, you see that you get this mid frontal, more positive old versus an old item that was called new. And that is some evidence connecting it to familiarity because familiarity would distinguish these two classes of items. On the other hand, if you look at deep hits versus shallow hits, remember deep encoding increases the probability that you're going to have details that are recollected. And if you can make that contrast, you notice that you get this left parietal old new effect, this LPC that you see here. And part of that information suggests that uh, it's related to recollection. Now I'm going to review some of the evidence here, but you can get more of this in the Rugg and Kern paper. So another seminal study, Kern in 2000, what he did is he had words that were presented for about 800 milliseconds and people were instructed to study the words, but particular paying attention to their plurality. So for example, the word truck is singular and trucks is plural. And at test, they had the exact same items that were presented. They had some new items that were unstudied that were presented. He also presented some words that had the plurality changed. So for example, putting in trucks when you studied truck. Now these items would be changed, but they would be familiar, right? Because they have a lot of overlap with the items that were studied. So the key here is in the ERPs. In the FN400 window that you can see here, this graph is a little hard to see, but the studied yes and the similar items are right together in terms of their ERP amplitude, both of which are more positive than the new, so they both elicited that FN400. However, when you look at the LPC, the studied items are more positive than both the similar and the new. They're down here, so just the studied items elicited the LPC. So studies like this that are showing a dissociation between the FN400 and the LPC in items that should be similar in familiarity but differ in recollection. Another example is using RK judgments. So if you remember, you can use you can have people separate their experiences R for recollection, K for familiarity. And this is a data from Current's 2004 paper, and what you see is R ERPs and K ERPs are more positive than new in the FN400 window, but in the LPC window, R are more positive than both K and new. Again, very similar kinds of data that we just saw before. And Woodruff et al., what they did is they did RK judgments as well to separate familiar and recollected items, but they also looked at confidence. And what they found is they found greater confidence ratings. So if you look at confidence old and then the solid line here for the FN400 window, there was a significant difference here. It was greater for familiar, confident, old responses. But it was equivalent for familiar and recollected items as defined by R and K judgments. Now when you looked, so suggesting the FN400 was influenced by confidence. But when you looked at the LPC, the confidence didn't vary between low and high confidence. Instead, recollected items were more positive than highly confident familiar items, K judgments. So again, associating recollection with the LPC and FN400 with familiarity. Now this other study, this Wilding and Rugg study, what they did is they had participants do source judgments. So they studied items in two lists, a male or a female voice list. And what they had people do is report on the source of the information and they looked at ERPs for um, items that were remembered. So the first hit here refers to whether or not they judged it old and it was old. And the second item here means whether or not they got the source correct. So another hit here would mean they got the source correct. A miss means they got the source incorrect and a correct rejection of course are new items. And what they found here is that again recollection as defined by accurate source judgments elicited a more positive ERP than both new and source items that were not remembered uh, during this LPC window. Again, linking recollection with the LPC as defined by accurate source judgments. So that's just a, a quick overview. I have another video that I'm gonna do a deep dive on. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video once it's done. So you can read these articles, the Rugg and Curran paper, presents a lot of evidence that suggests the FN400 is connected to familiarity and the LPC is connected to recollection. 
The other paper to look at is a Mecklinger and Bader paper that uh, does an intensive analysis of FN400 information and provides some complexity that surrounds that ERP component. So thanks for watching.